This is self-made for cheap um, incubator from a refrigerator. We almost wrapped up here. Uh, last night I got everything wired. We were working on this incubator, just this one side. And if you guys been keeping up, you know what's going on. Um, last night I got all of the uh, the limit switches wired up, the motor wired up, and uh, now the turner is running. What I did to save me on a little cost, pay attention to that temperature up there, it's, uh, it's been climbing. But um, what I did is I wired it to the uh, control panel for the original incubator, which is this one. I used the same set of uh, timers, so I didn't have to buy more. And I just added two more limit switches. This is the limit switches. I mean, not limit switches. Two more relay switches. These are relays, not limits. Um, I added two more. These two are for the first incubator. This one here. Oh, that's my daughter. My daughter did that. Well, that's <laughs> my daughter made this. Um, anyways, uh, but the second two um, relay switches uh, is for the new incubator I made so basically how that works is they connect here which you know I need to make this look nicer but um, basically how it works when the timer kicks on it's gonna turn both uh, turners at the same time that uh, that's gonna kick on in about a minute 15 seconds um, or less so uh, I think I'm gonna pause it so when it starts turning, uh, you can see you can see them turn. Like I said before, I got quail eggs in this one. I got a turkey, a couple turkey eggs at the top, and a couple uh, boiled rock eggs. You'll you'll see the uh, turkey turkey eggs once the um, turner turns downwards. And then this incubator, there's nothing. It's just running, doing the test runs and make sure it's going to hold temperature good, which it is. You see it's already 100 degrees, it kicked off. Um, but yeah, I think this is green light, we're all good. And we just have about 20 seconds that they're going to kick on. I've been working on this one. I've been working on this, it's going to be my lockdown. Uh, so I'm going to do that with you. Nine seconds, they're going to kick on and they're going down so you'll see this red light come on indicating that this uh, timer is on up there it goes see them going down that one stopped that one stopped see they both stopped because they hit the little uh, limit switch on the side you see the timer still on because it, it only comes on in one minute intervals that's as short as you can make it is uh one minute so the limit switches stop the power from going to the motors i don't know if you can yeah you can see that limit switch too right there that little arm hit that limit switch i need to tidy up my wires yeah i know and uh but i just want to show you there's 10 seconds left and then that uh, timer is going to kick off. There you go. You see it kick off. And if you heard that click, that's the limit switches. That's the limit switches inside. I'm, I keep saying limit switches. That's the relay switches clicking. Because if you can, if you can see uh, inside this limit switch, there is a. Uh, a, carp, a copper piece on this side and there's a copper piece on this side and then there's a little lever in the middle well what happens is when it gets power it clicks that little lever over to the right side which is connected to these wires here and feeds the power to the um, to the motors then once the uh, power is cut off to this relay switch it flips that little lever over back using my magnetic um, energy clicks that lever back over to this side which is nothing hooked to this side so it's not getting any power anymore um, the reason you need your relay switches is because you have to 
you have to, there's only two wires coming out of the drill motor. So basically you have to cross the wires in order to make it go in forward and reverse. You have to cross the wires so so that the the, um, the power don't feed back and, and, and short itself out. You use these relay wires, I mean these relay switches and these relay switches stop the um, power from going through the current. So you need two for each turner and that's why I have four right here. Um, so I hope that was uh, helpful. And like I said, we're at the end of this. I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up so you can see it on the inside. Uh, like I told you before, that's bad news. Don't open it. Don't open it without uh, shutting your fans off. And and that that's real bad that I just did that. If I hit eggs in here, that wouldn't be good. But um, it's no big deal. It's just better not to do it. So I'm try to get you a good. Good look at it. See how it's looking there. That's the shells, and they're turned downwards. And come down here at the bottom. That's your burner eye. Your heating element in this case. And that's your fan, once again, out of the refrigerator. Free parts. That's your drill that we rigged on here. That's a little oil. I need to uh, clean it out because before I. Um, put any eggs in here and uh, that's your other fan in the door as you remembered I ran that through here I ran it out ran it out the top um, as you see my temperatures dropped down to 96 95 9 95 7 so, uh, click that back on uh, but yeah that's that's the winner. Like I said, now we're working on this this bad boy here because after these eggs, if they're chicken eggs, once they reach the seventeenth uh, day, I believe, you take them out and you put them. Uh, well, you don't have to take them out. You just stop turning the eggs. Uh, I take them out and I put them inside of my lockdowns, which I call it. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this later. Uh, and I put them in here and I don't touch them. So that way, if I had eggs in here that's ready to come out, ready to stop being turning, and I have eggs that still need to be turned, I can take them out, put them in here, and I won't touch them for three days. That third day, then I'll go in there and I'll take all the chicks that hatched out and all the ones that hadn't hatched. Um, they get they get uh, taken to the back and uh, thrown away. Well, actually, I put them in my compost pile back in the back. So... Uh, Hopefully I've covered everything for you. If not, uh, send me a message and I'll do my best to um, answer that question for you. Once again, this is uh, self-made for cheap. We just made an incubator. And uh, man, it's, it's cheaper than buying one at the store, that's for sure. That only holds about 40-something eggs. I know this incubator here... I had about 491 eggs in it, and I probably could have held another 30 or so. So, you're getting a little over 500 eggs, and that's chicken eggs. So, you're getting over 500 chicken eggs in one of these, um, and that, that's amazing, if you ask me. Uh, and I have two of them now, so I can, I can hatch about 1,000 eggs at a time. Um, quail eggs, of course, you're going to get way more quail eggs in there than chicken eggs if you uh, make special trays for them. Uh, so, appreciate you for watching. Appreciate you for hanging in. Appreciate you for being patient. Uh, once again, it's self-made for cheap.